G'day, I'm Alistair Christie, and welcome to my Code Rage 7 presentation. A bit about me, I've been programming in Delphi since version 3, mostly developing real estate systems here in New Zealand. In 2006, I started making free video tutorials on Delphi, which brings me to... LearnDelphi.tv, which is where you can find said videos. LearnDelphi.tv is the internet's premier site for video tutorials on Delphi, probably the only site. Over the last year, I have also produced a number of commercial videos, making up about 20 hours of content, which you can of course purchase from LearnDelphi.tv. In this video, we're going to take a look at XML data bindings. This follows along from one of my commercial videos, although there aren't any prerequisites for this video except some knowledge of both Delphi and XML. As you can see from the slide, the data binding mechanism provides an abstraction from TXML document, with the wizard creating a number of classes and interfaces, allowing you to manipulate the XML document via Delphi code, giving you access to code completion, type checking, and so on. That's enough of an introduction, let's now get into some code. So to start off, I am going to create a um, FireMonkey desktop application, and let's make that a little bit smaller so that it fits. Now we're doing uh, XML in Delphi, and uh, that's primarily done with the XML document, um, which we're going to be using but somewhat indirectly. Now this is actually uh, part two, my um, part one video, we, we cover the XML document, uh, or TXML document, in quite a lot of detail. Um, you're not really going to need to have watched that video um, to uh, understand what's going on. Um, so that's, that's one of my commercial videos. Um, what we're going to do is I've got a couple of XML definition files, uh, and I'll just delete that XDB file for now. Um, uh, we've got a uh, DTD file and an XSD, and we can have a look at those. Here's the uh, DTD, which um, describes an XML file, uh, and this is a newspaper. It has a bunch of articles. Um, you know, it's a headline, byline, lead, body. Um, and a bunch of attributes as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a new XML data binding. Um, and to do that, we just go File, New, Other. And in our Delphi Projects XML, there's the XML data binding. And from that, we specify our XML file, which is uh, our, our DTT. And it generates, um, well, we, we now have a look at the um, data binding wizard and we can um, change a bunch of um, things in here. So in particular, we can have a look at the uh, newspaper type, and it has a bunch of articles which repeat, so there's, there's uh, potentially more than one. Uh, and they're all articles, and they have as an author and editor and, and so on. Um, now, we can change some of these properties. So I, if I made that Unicode string a t-date time instead, um, and we could say edition, I don't care about that byline I'm not concerned with, lead I'm not concerned with, notes I'm not concerned with, and so on. Um, so then we go next, and we see that it's generated for us a couple of interfaces, which we'll look at in a bit more detail shortly. And it's also, um, we can store our settings in a XDB file, which basically just describes um, our, basically what we selected. Um, so we can come back and um, if we need to regenerate the uh, XM, the um, Pascal code, uh, we can based on this XDB file. So you'd probably want to put this file in uh, source control along with your project. Um, so this is the file that's created, and here are the, the two interfaces that we saw earlier, uh, our uh, newspaper type and article type. And um, so they have a bunch of getter and setter methods and uh, a bunch of properties. Uh, and if we scroll down, we see we've got our uh, implementation, uh, so a concrete uh, um, TXML article type or a newspaper type, and it has an add method and returns. Um, so if we, we can actually have a look at that add method, which just returns an item as an uh, IXML article type. Um, so that's all very straightforward. Uh, as our getters and setters, and of course the properties are defined in the uh, interface. 
Now, there's also uh, three global functions. Uh, and the first one, we're, initially we're just going to concern ourselves with the new newspaper. So let's have a quick look at that before we get too carried away. And um, basically it returns a new XML document, um, which basically uh, creates a new TXML document, makes it active, and sets its version. Uh, it then calls get.binding on that, which uh, that's the interface, so uh, there's no implementation there, so um, and uh, here is its implementation, uh, does a bunch of stuff and um, basically returns the root element um, which will be the newspaper in our case for this example. So um, let's start making use of that. Uh, the first thing we'll need to do is use the example pass and um, throw a button and a memo. So I'll just throw the button atop there stretch out our memo and what I'll do, take advantage of the new anchors um, right and left, sorry, right and bottom that are um, in um, the new FireMonkey with XE3. And let's just change the caption on that which is of course called text in FireMonkey, uh, just to confuse me. Um, so in here we're going to create a new newspaper. Now it returns a IXML newspaper type and I could create a variable and um, what have you. But I am lazy and sometimes lazy programs get more done. Um, so control shift V uh, to declare a variable. So we have a newspaper and Remember one dot text is assigned XML, which is a string. And I try and run that and we get an error. Uh, I think this is a bug in the um, uh, data binding wizard. Um, there's no we need to we need to add variants uh, effectively. But that's uh, not a problem. So we can now run that. Got a newspaper, and we get our newspaper um, element, the or root element. Now, um, sales of that newspaper aren't going to be very good because it has no articles, so we can um, fairly easily um, add an article, and we can do about the same. Just uh, Control Shift V to create our. Um, article a variable de declaration um, so we can now set the author date is now oops now um, headline and something along those lines. So we can run that and we can do the get our newspaper with our article our article uh, element and it has an author attribute and a date attribute and notice that um, this is a, a day, month, year. Uh, I'm here in New Zealand and that's our date time format. Um, you probably probably wouldn't have wanted to declare this as a uh, t-date time type and instead use a like um, uh, a string, a Unicode string and use a UTC uh, formatted type uh, date time. And of course our uh, headline and body um, tags. Um, so that is fairly straightforward and we could of course add uh, uh, more articles. Um, for, lazy and just do that. We've now got two identical articles. Um, so 
this this one article finished and there's a new anyway. Um, so that's our first example. Now we're going to have a look at the XSD now um, and have a look at some other bits and pieces. Our next file is example two, um, and it's an XSD file, which is a uh, uh, describes um, this one describes a bunch of shipments. Uh, so we're now going to do exactly the same thing. Um, let's create file new other XML data binding, and we'll grab example two. And we're going to do the same thing. Um, I won't bother customizing this one, um, but it's basically a, a, a ship order type, and it has an order ID, an order person, and a, a shipment address, and then a bunch of items. And if, if we wanted multiple addresses, for instance, we could add the repeating, um, and so on. So, and we'll do the, exactly the same thing. And we've got another XML data binding. So let's throw another. Button uh, shipment, and we want to use the unit. Uh, and new ship order. Okay, so. We can add an order ID, which is 42, dot order person, okay, ship2, dot name, master, So, fun, so famous that I need to specify what country I'm in at the moment. New Zealand. Um, and then we want to add a bunch of items. So uh, I'm going to be quite lazy. Go 4i equals 1 to 4. Do be, uh, begin. Um, Add and do the control shift V there. Dot title is assigned so, uh, quantity equals one. Something like that. Oh, we can make it NZD, thirty-five dollars. Um, and we can do the exact same. Uh, dot text is assigned XML. So I haven't really learned anything new there. Now this is all on one line. Um, which is potentially a little bit um, frustrating. So item one, quantity one, price, and so on and so on. Um, and um, the window is not following the cursor. It might be the lack of scroll bars. Um, so it would be nice if we um, split that out onto multiple lines. Now, what we can do is rather than saying new shipment order, we can say get ship order and specify an XML document or an IXML document which XML document one happens to be um, and on this I can come down and say uh, node auto indent and turn that to true um, so if we have a look at the get shipment order uh, we'll see um, we pass in our doc and it basically does this very, very similar to uh, our new um, shipment order except uh, it does it based on the 
uh, documents. We're not creating a new XML document, we're using a, a new one, oh, sorry, an existing one. And um, when we run that and run it, we get much more uh, tidy um, XML. So there's our, our order person, uh, where we're shipping it to, the items, um, the order ID attribute, and so on and so forth, uh, which is all very good. Now, I'm actually just going to change this back to new ship order, uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm shipment dot. Um, now, there's a bunch of methods on here, and document owner, which is the uh, XML document, and we can have a look um, the XML document at its options properties, and I'm just going to copy that, plus do uh, node whatever did. So we can actually get access to the um, uh, XML document. And we get the same same thing. Um, of course we might not want to uh, display just display the XML, we might want to save it to a file or a stream or something like that. Um, now dot and we go save and there's nothing. But we can go to the um, owner document dot uh, save to file And we can run that, and if we have a look in temp, um, I can still click on that and have a look at it in Internet Explorer eventually. Um, and there we have it, uh, have our uh, XML file. So um, that was uh, that's that's our, our second, exa second example. Um, you might, however, you might not actually have a definition file for a um, of you might not have you know, like a DTT or XSD. You might just have the XML file. Um, in which case, uh, uh, let's let's have a, a brief look at that. So we can just go file new other XML data binding. And we can actually go, oops, uh, C temp, and rather than saying um, sort of all the XML uh, definition formats, we can actually just grab an XML file. And we can see that we've got our ship order type, it's an uh, order ID, and it's, it's automatically detected it as an integer, uh, order person, ship to, and so on. Although you'll notice that there is uh, somewhat less information, so we've only got country here, we haven't got the um, address or city or anything like that, because uh, we didn't put those in the XML file. So Delphi is just uh, recognized as much as it can. Um, so that um, from that we can um, um, we, could, we could read in that order type, but um, let's have a look at a slightly more complicated example. So the example, um, I thought we'd do uh, an, a trade me example. Trade me is a, a New Zealand's equivalent to eBay. Um, they sort of had first mover advantage, and eBay hasn't really uh, made much of a dent here in New Zealand. Um, so um, basically, um, this basically this is the trade me property, which I have quite a lot to do with. Um, what I'm going to do is this is the trade me API, and this is a method um, retrieve member listings, uh, which. Uh, we can grab it in XML or JSON. Of course, we're going to do XML, and it returns a, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, there's the example uh, XML file, um, but basically, I'm just going to copy that, and we need the filter, which will be all dot XML, uh, and then we need a member ID, and 
and I have one here. So we're just going to grab all the listings for a particular member. I have no idea who this is, but anyway. And that gives us an XML file. So I'm going to save that as all.xml and yes, replace it. And let's make sure there's no get rid of that XDB, which I was playing with before. So we can now go back to Delphi and file new other our XML data binding and grab our all.xml. And I'm just going to accept all the uh, default uh, interpretations. Um, uh, you know, let's grab some integers and, and anyway, uh, and it gener generates quite a substantial amount of code. Um, so what are we looking at? Uh, 670 lines of code, which is quite a bit. Um, but uh, in fact, let's call that trade me listings. And of course, we'll use that. And we'll add another button. And give it a new caption or text property. Um, so, uh, if I use the unit, I've already used it. Um, we now have load listings, so it's the third sort of global, global method we're going to look at. And let's just find our XML file. And of course, we need to load that into something. And I suppose we could have a look at the. Um, uh, let's go. It's all. Plus plus. No, why did that not work? I suppose I could just drag and drop it. Or I could open in uh, Internet Explorer. Um, and it has, you've got um, a bunch of things, a list, a listing, and a whole bunch of things. And let's um, let's grab the images out of um, the file. So, um, dot lines dot clear. Um, Four eyes zero to listings dot list, which is our uh, explorer listings dot sorry uh, listings dot list, and it has a bunch of uh, listings in it. Um, so count minus one, and we need a variable for this. So it's the control shift V. Add listings dot list oops listing i dot picture href and run that. And there we have all the thumbnails for the um, various uh, listings, the properties. Now, um, there's a bit of di digression. Let's um, make that memo a list box. And um, dot, dot text. And we can now click on the various things and throw an image control on there. Um, change um, we need to download the image so I need a HTTP K 
get I mean, the URL dot items item index and we'll throw that into a memory stream um, I should write this a lot nicer, but um, uh, I'm being very lazy. Load from stream ms. And there we have it downloading um, the images. There's a little bit of a digression, but pretty cool anyway. Um, so let's save all of that. Now it strikes me as a little bit um, uh, contrived to be using the same XML document uh, that we used to create our um, uh, data binding. Um, so let's go back to a different... let's copy that that in there and we get a different XML file. But let's copy that URL um, and say so we've got a um, uh, um, one dot get that URL. Now we could also of course parameterize that um, and um, you know have a little Edit box or something like that to type in the member number and that, that kind of thing. Um, but um, I don't want to get too carried away. Um, so rather than saying load listings, we will go get and we'll specify our XML document one. And before we get too carried away, dot XML dot text is assigned now XML stra and we should get fingers crossed a different set of images in fact there are more of them by the look of it and that works uh, just the same downloading the thumbnails um, so we should probably have a, a bit more of a play around um, with our XML document and see what we can do XML is a um, tree structure, so we, what we might do is um, throw a tree view on and um, have a, a list of listings and um, display. We'll start off with just displaying listing ID. So let's throw a tree view on there, and I'll be really, really lazy. And let's just make that turn that visibility off for now. Put that on and anchors. Okay, now what I'll do, we'll stick with the trade me stuff, so I'll just refactor this out. So let's pull that out. Um, refactor extract method. And that's odd. Let's try that again. Actually, before I do that, I will need to shift this up into here. And just copy that and we'll put a new button on. Shift V to get our um, declare our variable. Uh, so we now need to fill our tree view, um, 
and so let's do that now. So basically, um, we want to iterate over uh, each of our um, listings. So listings dot list. Uh, so for i is assigned zero to dot listings dot list dot count minus one. So for each listing in our list, uh, do listing gets listings i. Uh, if I could type it all right, and we need to declare our variable. Um, so now we want to add our listing ID to the tree view, uh, which is just the listing ID. So um, what I'm going to do is rather than just create a uh, T tree view item, I'm going to create a custom one. Uh, so So uh, we probably now want to um, add some children to that so that we've got a bit more of a, a, a tree structure. And to do that, um, I'm going to start by writing a little support routine. Um, okay, add tree item. So we're going to set basically set all these properties so we can do it all in one line. Um, so we have a parent is a tfmx object text a string and is a one of those and we want to return one of those Simplify this uh, somewhat. Well, in fact, item is assigned. And our parent is the tree view. Our text is a listing ID. So we can now add tree item uh, 
uh, our parent is now going to be item. Uh, semicolon on the end there. Our text. Uh, we'll go title and listing and. Also add start date. So we now run that. And we've got uh, our tree. Um, but we notice that the, this date format uh, is not particularly human readable. Um, you can, we can pretty much work it out, but um, we want to convert that perhaps into the local date time format. Now, if I use the units uh, access built ins, Built-ins, not bulletins, and come back down. There is a XML time to date time, and we need our XML uh, date time string, uh, which is that. And there's also a, 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 a parameter for dealing with UTC. I don't know if it's in UTC um, relative to UTC, so I won't worry. So um, that returns a date time, so we want we want to convert that back to a string. So um, date time to str. So when you're dealing with XML files and dates, you're probably going to come across that date format quite frequently. So it's quite helpful to know uh, how to convert that. That's a bit of a long long line of code, but um, I probably normally split that out, but. And we now have a uh, much more um, ordinary uh, date time. Now um, we could we probably want to also retrieve uh, the picture when we click on an item. So we can uh, do that, and we're already doing that um, in here. Oh, and it's an earthquake. Very interesting. Um, still shaking a bit. Okay, I'll carry on. Um, so I'll refactor this out, uh, and just, actually no, I don't want that bit. We want all of that, but I want a URL parameter. Just sort of doing a bit of a I might call it prefactoring. Before refactoring, so okay, and we can now extract that. Um, get I don't know, thumbnail or get image, get picture. Probably have a, probably ordinarily have a much much better name for that. But anyhow, and we can do have a look at, on the on tree view change on change and this is you'll see why I put the um, we've got this custom uh, tree view um, type uh, listing tree view rather than just using the tree view item um, so so we're going to use get, get picture on something um, so if gv one dot selected equal to nil. Um, then let's have a look. Um, the best way to do this um, tree. Dot listing okay, we need to declare that of 
groß. Oh, and I can also check if the URL is not blank. And href. So we're grabbing the um, uh, yeah from the the, the our tree view item. We're grabbing the listing and then grabbing the, the um, URL and then downloading it. So uh, fairly fairly straightforward. What we might also want to do is if we have a look in here, we'll see that there's um geographic location. Uh, so latitude and longitude. Now we could display a map um, with those those coordinates, um, which we can just open in a browser. Fairly straightforward. So um, let's do that next. So let's throw another button on there. And oops. And call that map. And in it, um, we're going to want to do basically that initially. Probably do some sort of refactoring to encapsulate the function, but I'll be I'll be lazy for now. Um, and we're going to need a URL to open it up on Google Maps. And the URL is going to look something uh, like this. Percent s, and we want to throw the latitude and longitude in there. Now I can go listing dot geographic location dot for both of those, but what I'll do is go geo is assigned geographic location, and and we'll need a variable for that. Latitude and geo dot longitude. Um, and now we want to open that URL, and I, I couldn't find a a um, platform agnostic way of doing that. Um, so I'll revert to being my lazy self um, and throw shell API in there. Now we're pretty much uh, specific to Windows. Um, uh, and, and speaking of that, uh, if we get too carried away. Uh, currently, this is um, DOM vendors MSXML. You probably want to ch change that to uh, ADOM, which is um, obviously the MS part is not going to work on uh, on a Mac. Um, so now we want to go shell execute, uh, handle. I don't know what it is on a FireMonkey application, um, but we want to open. Picture. and uh, I probably should include the Windows unit, but um, I think one is, is default, show default. Um, so if we run that now, and pick a listing, we can bring up a the map, um, probably. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so um, that's that's pretty basic. So just before we finish up, um, 
let's bring up our uh, trade me code again. Um, and to our listing, uh, which is a IXML listing type, and we can see that's actually an IXML node, and our, we've got also this uh, IXML node collection. Now, um, I cover these two um, to death in my uh, XML on Delphi part one video, which is one of my commercial videos, um, which is basically all about the, the TXML document. Now, what it means that this is a uh, IXML node is that we can use uh, all the um, sort of functions and features um, such as the child values property and access title uh, in, in this form and in fact uh, because this is a, a default sort of array indexer we can actually do that which is much more concise and we get the exact same result. Um, now it's m much nicer to be able to say um, dot title because we get you know the little code insight and what have you. But it might be the case that you there are certain um, nodes that you didn't bind for a, for, for a particular reason, or um, that. Uh, the, the structure of your XML is such that there's some stuff which is uh, always present and there's a whole bunch of random stuff in there as well which um, you might want to be able to access but you, it, it's not possible to um, create a, a data binding for. Um, so um, so you can use all the uh, properties of the IXML node and of course our, our list is a collection um, so um, rather than saying dot listing uh, we can say dot child nodes i um, and of course we need to typecast that to our i xml listing type and of course that will work as well um, so that, that's kind of what it means the the um, so the, the basically these structures are just an overlay over over the um, uh, IXML document uh, or TXML document. Um, so you can still access uh, the sort of lo lower level, you know, go down a level and, and access the um, sort of internal structure in a bit more detail. Um, but that's uh, list. Uh, what did I have there previously? Listing I. Um, so that's pretty much all I wanted to say for this video. Um, so we will stop here. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video. I hope you found it instructive. I'm Alistair Christie.